Good morning. And a very warm welcome to our service here this morning at Cockpen and Carrington. Whether you're here in person, lovely to have you here in person, uh, or whether you're watching on the recording, you are most welcome. And today we are coming back to Ruth. We've had a few uh, weeks perhaps uh, separated from it, but here we come back and we continue uh, in the story through chapter two today and finding out a bit more about uh, Ruth's hard work in the fields, but also about Boaz's enormous kindness uh, to her and the ray of hope that uh, begins to shine for Ruth and for Nomi indeed in the care that they are shown. Uh, so that is our theme for today. Uh, I know that there are no other uh, intimations, but I ha there is uh, a special wee presentation uh, to be done, a little surprise presentation. And I'm going to ask Anne, uh, Anne Clark, our new uh, flower convener, uh, if she'd like to do that. And just uh, say thank you also, Anne, for the beautiful, beautiful flowers once again this morning. We're delighted to have you uh, with us. Thank you for all that you are doing. Just a wee something for Liz. Um, Liz has been your flower convener since you all sadly lost Nancy. I knew Nancy very well as well through the Flower Club. And um, Liz took her place and did the job very, very well. So I was actually very honoured to be asked to become your flower convener, especially since I'm just into your church pretty recently. I get a lot of peace from coming to the church and doing the flowers. So there's a big thank you from me for allowing me to be your flower convener. But I'd like Liz to come forward and accept this gift, please. Thank you. This is just taking the feet from me. <laughs> um, you know, flowers like Anne, flowers is just my happy place. But um, it's when you see what Anne has done in the short time that she's been here, just the talent, and um, I'm quite happy to bow out and let her carry on with that. But thanks very much indeed, anyway. Okay. Lovely to celebrate that together this morning. And thank you. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Anne. Uh, it's such a, a ministry in the flowers. Uh, beautiful for us as we come together to worship and then a blessing to those uh, to whom they go. So thank you very, very much indeed for that. Let's just take a few moments of stillness as we come to our call to worship uh, and focus on together uh, upon the Lord today. And as we're going to be thinking about the steadfast love of the Lord in our reading today, in our theme today, uh, our call to worship comes from the book of Lamentation. Uh, and uh, chapter 3, verses 22 to 23, probably the most famous verses from that book. Uh, and we read there, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. And we're going to join to sing uh, the words of another hymn, uh, a psalm from the Old Testament and praise, Psalm 116, and the words thereof of the psalmist and praise of the Lord. And indeed, we'll be thinking about Ruth and Naomi and uh, all the favor that they were shown and the gratefulness they had. Our gratefulness too, we bring to the Lord. And so we sing, how can I ever thank the Lord for all his gifts to me? Let's join to sing.
let us pray. Heavenly Father, we gather as your people to worship you, to give you our praise and to rejoice in your love for us, to give thanks for the wonderful gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and that through him we are able to know you better. We praise you for your goodness and grace, that no matter how far we stray from your loving arms, you are always ready and willing to bring us back into fellowship with you. Forgive us, Lord, for the times we have strayed from you, when we have failed to appreciate all we have received. Forgive us the times we have put our trust in other things rather than you, for the times we have not shared your love and care with others. Meet with us now and help us to live every day in the light of your presence, that we might truly seek to follow you, reflect your love and show your compassion in every situation, responding to your guidance and asking that whatever the situation we find ourselves in, we will be equipped to meet it in your name. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. We join to sing again, and our hymn is one in which we give thanks for so many different gifts that the Lord provides on us, as we're going to be thinking about all the gifts that Ruth and Naomi uh, experienced in God's favor. So let's join to sing uh, this hymn. Sing to the Lord a joyful uh, song. Lift up your hearts, your voices raise. Let's do just that to God together.
The scripture reading this morning is taken from the Old Testament book of Ruth. Ruth chapter 2, verses 14 to 23. At mealtime, Boaz said to Ruth, Come and have a piece of bread and dip it in the sauce. So she sat with workers and Boaz passed some roasted grain to her. She ate until she was satisfied and she had still some food left over. After she had to go on picking up corn, Boaz ordered the workers, let her pick it up even where the bundles are lying and don't say anything to stop her. Besides that, pull out some corn from the bundles and leave it for her to pick up. So Ruth went on gathering corn in the field until evening. And when she had beaten it out, she found she had nearly 10 kilograms. She took the corn back into town and showed her mother-in-law how much she had gathered. She also gave her the food left over from the meal. Naomi asked her, where did you gather all this? Whose field have you been working in? May God bless the man who took an interest in you. So Ruth told Naomi that she had been working in a field belonging to a man named Boaz. May the Lord bless Boaz, Naomi exclaimed. The Lord always keeps his promises to the living and the dead. And she went on. That man is a close relative of ours, one of those responsible for taking care of us. Then Ruth said, Best of all, he told me to keep picking up corn with his workers until they finish the harvest. Naomi said to Ruth, Yes, my daughter, it will be better for you to work with the woman in Boaz's field. You might be molested if you went to someone else's field. So Ruth worked with them and gathered corn until all the barley and wheat had been harvested, and she continued to live with her mother-in-law. Amen, and thanks be to God for this reading from his holy word. Thank you very much, Bill. And we join to sing again, and as we've been thinking a little bit about the story of Ruth and uh, the harvest going on, our next hymn it has something of a harvest feel about it and giving thanks uh, for all of the harvest and the land around us as we join to sing, the earth is yours, O God, you nourish it with rain. And my goodness, we've known that over the last few days, we've had plenty of rain. Let's join to sing. <coughs> We thank you again for your word to us. We thank you that it is your living word 
And so across the generations, it uh, speaks to us afresh of your love and care. And so we thank you as we continue our journey with Ruth. And we pray that by your spirit, you'll hear us. We will hear you speaking to us today. Thank you for this time in your name. Amen. As I was saying, we're returning to Ruth uh, today. And as we've continued on in the story, we begin to see that although Naomi and Ruth have come through a very difficult time, uh, things are looking more positive. It is still true that they would both have been regarded as poor and both these ladies have been widowed. Uh, and people would know also that Ruth was a foreigner as she comes to the community of Bethlehem. However, we have seen that Ruth has not let these circumstances hold her back. And she has diligently taken up the opportunity to go out and to glean in the harvest field to pick up leftover grain for herself and for Naomi. As we saw last time, Ruth went out to the fields hoping to find someone in whose eyes she would find favor. When she got there and found herself in the part of the field belonging to Boaz, she received the favor she had hoped for and was somewhat overwhelmed by the level of kindness that Boaz showed, causing her to exclaim, why have I found favor in your sight that you should take notice of me when I am a foreigner? And then with words of hope, she asks, may I continue to find favor in your eyes, my Lord. She has already received much from Boaz in being assured of the freedom and the safety uh, to work in his field and the invitation to be refreshed with water as she needed it, just like the other workers and servants. It had been a wonderful day already and surely she couldn't expect even more kindness to be coming her way. Well, yes, she could, as we discover uh, in the unfolding story, having chosen to put her trust in the God of Israel, under whose wing she has taken refuge. When she heard about this God from Naomi and chosen to go with her and to make Naomi's people her people and to be determined to choose God her God, Naomi's God is her God, she would not have known what that would truly mean. She could never have known just how dramatic and bountiful would be the provision of this wonderful God. Ruth had chosen to take refuge in him and now she was discovering that he was able to do exceedingly more than all she could ask or imagine. In the opening verses, of our passage today, we see Ruth receive exceedingly more than she had hoped for or imagined after she had set out that morning. And it all comes through the abundant extent of Boaz's kindness. We read that at mealtime, Boaz said to Ruth, come here and eat some of this bread and dip your morsel in the sour wine. That was a very gracious invitation to come and sit and eat alongside all the others. And it was followed up by Boaz then heaping her uh, up with a, a supply uh, of parched grain to eat at lunch. And Ruth does so and has some left over to take away. We've already learned about the provision God made in the law for the poor, the widow, the foreigner, like Ruth, to be in the field, to glean, and have a share in the harvest. Boaz has freely invited Ruth to partake in that, but we see how he doesn't do just the minimum. As Alistair Begg says here, he's not grudgingly doing his part to honor the law. He's not saying, oh well, I've got a foreigner here, and it says in the law that you're supposed to look after them, so I suppose I'll have to look after her. Who brought her in here? Why did she have to show up? 
Now I'll, I've got all this to do on her behalf. No, Boaz is not in any way so grudging. He's not choosing to do the minimum, to follow the letter of the law. And in truth, God gave his law so that his people lived it out. And as they lived it out, they would show and echo his character as one who has a heart for the poor and the needy. And in Boaz, who puts heart and soul into upholding the instructions of the law, Ruth discovers the heart of God through the unfolding kindness of Boaz. As Alistair Begg again affirms, Boaz is a wonderful example of God's grace, about going above and beyond in every way in his kindness. We find in him the overflowing generosity of someone who has discovered who God is and has discovered that he has been entrusted with the provision of making this God known. The invisible God becomes visible in the care of his people. Boaz's invitation was a gracious invitation to Ruth, and it was a generous invitation in all the ways that Ruth is included and provided for. She has the freedom to work and glean as much as she can. And then Boaz heaps her up with grain at lunchtime and draws her in to have lunch with the others. And furthermore, we, as we read on, Boaz's instructions to his workers to let Ruth glean even among the standing sheaves and for them to pull out some of the handfuls from the bundles for Ruth to collect. That's a vastly gracious and generous thought. He's not a man, Boaz, who offers dribs and drabs from the fringes of his harvest, but one who freely provides from the very heart of his harvest. And it's a wonderful picture to see. By the end of the day, we're told that Ruth had gathered an ephah of barley. And that is a very considerable weight. It's about five gallons of grain. And ephah was the name given to a vessel that could hold the weight of a person or contain a person in that vessel. So it's a big weight of grain that Ruth has collected through her own effort and through the generosity that she's been th shown through that day. And so when the end of the day comes, Ruth goes up the road home to Naomi with a super abundance of gathered grain for them both, plus the leftovers from her lunch. We may have heard that youngsters at school often have a little time of show and tell, perhaps after a weekend or perhaps after a time of holiday, and it's a chance for them all in a class to bring something in about what they've been doing, and then they can tell all about it. And as we follow Ruth home, how much she has to show and tell Naomi when she gets home after her long day in the field. And Naomi herself is amazed at the amount that Ruth has been able to gather and is full herself of excited questions. Where did you glean today? And where have you worked? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. And in that back and forth of their excited conversation, Ruth reveals that it's been in the field of a man called Boaz that she has worked that day. And so there's still more elation and excitement for Naomi on hearing this. And she reveals to Ruth that Boaz is a relative of theirs. She seems to have a sense of leaving behind the name she gave herself when she first came back to Bethlehem. I don't know if you remember, she gave herself the name Mara, which means bitter because of all the bitter struggle that she'd come through and was still experiencing. But now, with this glimmer of light, she can see herself as Naomi, 
again, meaning pleasant, beautiful. Through the continual kindness that has been shown by Boaz in the hand of the Lord. And the word that she uses for kindness in, in describing Boaz's kindness is the Hebrew word chesed, a word so often used in the Bible to describe God's kindness. It describes the loving kindness, the merciful, merciful provision of God. And Boaz exemplifies this chesed kindness of God, which leads to Ruth and Naomi being overwhelmed with favor. And as we come to the close of chapter two, we see that favor continuing as Ruth shares that she's been invited by Boaz to continue working in his fields right up to the end of the harvest. And Naomi encourages her daughter-in-law to do just that and stay safe with the other young women in Boaz's field. And so Ruth does go on. She keeps working until the end of the barley and the wheat harvest. And she stays living with her mother-in-law in looking after her. And so we're left at the end of chapter two, wondering what's gonna happen next. But for now in the story so far, how wonderful that Ruth and Naomi loved one another. How wonderful that they lived in companionship together. How wonderful to live under the shadow of God's wings in the companionship of those who have also found refuge in the Lord. And so through the continual kindness of Boaz, both Ruth and Naomi experience the abundance of God's loving provision. And as Alistair Begg concludes, he asks us a question. Do we know how much God is prepared to open the windows of heaven to us and pour out the choicest blessings upon our life? Do we think that somehow or another he wants to eke it out an ounce at a time? That he wants simply to bless a church with a wee bit here and a wee bit there? He says we make our God too narrow by, our, by, the, by false limits of our own. Ruth could not imagine the generosity and kindness that she was about to be shown when she went off to the field that day. And sometimes we forget to keep on trusting in our gracious, generous God for the abundance he longs to provide when we seek him and ask him. But let's be willing to be amazed again and again as we place our trust in God and continue to give thanks for the provision we have already known. And we might think, for example, of the wonderful provision that has come in just recently through gracious gifts of others to provide all the toasty machines and warming plates to allow us to press on in the Toasty Tuesday ministry. There was a need in helping us to get going. And it was answered abundantly by those who wanted to share in God's work here. And it's an amazing and wonderful provision. And again, on Tuesday, we welcomed about 285 young people. And it's a wonderful thing and wonderful con uh, conversations happening in that ministry to share Jesus's love with these dear young people and see where that goes and grows in the months and years ahead. And also let's be willing like Boaz to pass on God's generosity to the stranger in our midst, to the poor and the homeless who are our neighbors near and far, delighting as Boaz did to live out the heart of God in all he said and did. Let's be reminded that the invisible God becomes visible in the care of his people. And so let's seek to be a part of that as we are each able in order to bless others and to make them curious about what inspires us and 
uh, leads us to show that care in our community and to lead them to want to know more of the God who bestows such abundant provision. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are a God who delights to provide and show care. As we think of Boaz sharing your loving kindness in his words and actions, and Ruth working so hard to care for Naomi, so may we continue to grow in sharing your love, loving kindness where we are in the ways we can. The invisible God becomes visible in the care of his people. And we pray we can faithfully make you known to honour you, to care for those around us near and far, and help them discover they are known and cherished by you too in such a deep and special way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we'll continue now with our hymn, lovely hymn of expressing that, key, that sense of trust in God throughout our lives, and perhaps particularly in the more difficult times like Ruth and Naomi experienced and came through in the storms of life, we can know our trust in the Lord. Let's join to sing, My Life Flows On in Endless Song Above Earth's Lamentation. <laughs>
we continue our worship with our offering now. Let us pray. Gracious God, you provide for us and meet our needs. We dedicate this offering of money given here and in other ways, along with the gifts of our time, our energy, our love, our skills, to be used for your heart and purpose in the world and to further the promise of the coming of your kingdom. We ask these things in your name. Amen. And we continue in our prayers of thanksgiving and our prayers for others and ourselves. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for our continued reflections in the story of Ruth and today learning about the bountiful provision Boaz made to Ruth for the sake of her and her mother-in-law, Naomi, going above and beyond to show his kindness and care. Thank you that we see how this echoes something of the way you give to us. Only you give with unparalleled compassion and love and we are overwhelmed by your generosity. Creator God, you made a wonderful world and filled it with glorious content, landscapes and oceans, trees, shrubs and flowers, colors and textures, animals, birds and fish. And it was to us, your children, to whom you entrusted stewardship of all that you have made and are making. You call us to be faithful custodians of our planet. And so we lay before you our concerns about our changing climate. Change our attitudes that we may show our concern for the future and for today and ensure that we take care of each other worldwide. And this weekend, we pray for those in different parts of Scotland who have been flooded in these last days. We pray for the water that it goes down quickly. And we ask for the relief and aid to come, to be on hand, to bring rescue and support where it's needed. Creator God, you made us creatures of community to support and be supported by each other to see the needs of our neighbours, whether they live next door or on the other side of the world. We thrive because others care for us, and so we pray that you will help us to show our concern for those around us. 
remembering especially those recovering from the earthquakes in Morocco, from the flooding in Libya, the extensive drought in East Africa, and those overwhelmed by war in Ukraine, as well as in South Sudan, Yemen, and Syria. And we pray too for Israel and Palestine that this most recent eruption of conflict can be contained and can be brought to a swift reconciliation. And we remember those who have lost family and friends in the fighting of the last days. We think of those who go hungry, with 700 million people around our world facing starvation, 2.4 billion living with food insecurity, and 46% 46 of the world's population unable to afford a healthy diet. Help us to share in meeting the needs of the poor and hungry as we are able, and help us to welcome the stranger in our midst. Creator God, you gift to your people uh, the church, a global community of people who acknowledge your kingship and seek to do your will. We thank you for our part of the church, for those with whom we worship week by week, and we pray that you may make us one in spirit and purpose for you. We pray for our church. You know its strengths, you know its needs. May we all play our part in enabling your word to be proclaimed and your love to be shared so that all may be embraced in the wonderful truth that they are known and loved by you. Loving God, we bring to you our needs and the needs of those we know. We bring to you especially all who are sick. Those with mental health issues. Those who grieve the loss of a loved one whether that's very recently or some time ago. And those who face different challenges in their lives at present. Show us the way to make a difference. Challenge us to express your love in practical ways. May those we pray for know that we care and that you love them. And may that knowledge bring comfort and peace. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. As we're following the lives of Ruth and Boaz and Naomi in our uh, exploration of Ruth's story at the moment and seeing their whole trust in the faithfulness of God. So we join to sing a wonderful hymn celebrating God's faithfulness across the years in our final hymn this morning. All my hope on God is founded. All my trust he will renew.
may you know God's love and presence with you and before you this week in all that you meet and face. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you now and evermore.